guys, this is Martin Perdomo, the elite strategist, and you're listening to Latinos in Real Estate Investing Podcast. And today I want to talk about, is the market really crashing? If you're watching this video on YouTube, I would appreciate it if you just gave us a thumbs up. If you're listening to us and on audio, give us a positive review. We would really appreciate that. It really helps with the algorithms. And if you agree or disagree, let's uh, talk about it in the comments and let's uh, let's unpack it. I want to talk about the the market and where the market is. You know, the fear mongering has begun, and this reminds me a lot of what what occurred in 2008, 2007, in terms of the media starting to say is a housing crash here. They love to sensationalize. Just remember that bad news sells. But what I want to do today is I want us to review the actual data. So I'm going to show you the data in my market. What I am going to encourage you is do the research in your market and get yourself financially educated so you know exactly what to do and how to play the game and regardless of whatever is happening in the market. Is the market really coming to a crash or not? My personal opinion is I believe the market is correcting. I don't believe the market is crashing. What is really happening, right? We, we tend to forget that a 5.5% interest rate is not a high interest rate. I had a friend say to me, we got so used to putting a house in the market and within a weekend having five, six, seven, eight offers, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 over asking, that now we put a house in the market and it's taking two weeks, three weeks to actually get an offer. We're going back to normal levels. I put a couple of properties in the market on Memorial Day weekend. We are here in the Poconos. So my, my market is the Poconos. So we get a lot of New Yorkers, a lot of people from New Jersey in this market buy in this area. A lot of Airbnb, that's drying up quite a bit. We notice here where this is a very resorty type area. Tourism is really big for us here. And we're seeing that the buyers for that is starting to dry up. But anyways, we put these two properties, great products. I said, hey, we're going to sell this thing, this, these properties this weekend. Well, they didn't work out that way. We only had three showings. I started to kind of freak out a little bit. I was like, what's going on in the market? Is the market really crashing? What I'm finding is that the actual data with interest rates going up, the buyer pool is starting to become less and less. FHA buyers are the ones that are out. A lot of the conventional buyers are not out here. That has been my experience. That doesn't mean that it's what it's really happening out there. I'm just sharing with you what my experience is. Here in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, we currently have 739 active listings. During a month's period, so from May 6th to June 6th, we went from 555 new listings to 361 pending. So we have a net of around 200 positive on the positive. A healthy number of units on the market for Monroe and Pike County is 3,000 units. We only have 739. Even though it may feel a little painful, even though that we have less buyers, inventory is still very low. Although that is taking us a little longer, we're going back to normal. And in terms of how fast properties are selling, simple economics, if inventory is low, prices go up. Although prices haven't been increasing. I believe the data was one in five houses on the market decreased their prices in the month of May, which is quite interesting. I was one of those. Actually, I fell into that. I had a property in the market. We weren't getting any action. It was just sitting and sitting and i decided to drop it a little bit of uh, the interest rates going up it was it's shrinking my buyer pool so know your market one of the things that we're doing is we're playing in the affordable space so we figured out what is a medium household income in the united states based on that if the interest rates went to six seven percent what is the affordability in terms of price and then what the mortgage payment is gonna be. The banks don't wanna see more than 50%. Their mortgage payment, taxes, insurance, credit cards, car payments to not exceed 50% of your gross income. Once you know that number, we realize that, hey, even at a 7% interest rate, if we stay to flip, we're under 250, we'll always have a buyer there. We have to change our strategy to ensure that we continue to win as investors. The buyers are drying up, but the inventory is really low. I think we're gonna see a leveling off. I don't believe we're gonna have a crash. I believe the media is sensationalizing it. I could be wrong, I'm often wrong. One other thing I wanna share with you. Back in March, 2020, April, May, Mr. Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, came out and he said that he was committed not to raising interest rates 
through 2024. And yet, it's also the same person that came out and said that inflation was transitory. Now, it's the same person coming out being extremely adamant about raising interest rates to whatever level they need to get to, to tame inflation. It's important that you listen to everything that he's saying. It's important that you, you look at his track record and what he said before. And as he goes on to say he's gonna raise interest rates, that the feds are gonna raise interest rates to whatever level is going to take to, to tame inflation, I partially believe him. I don't believe everything he says because he's already shown me who he is. While interest rates are going up, I'm not concerned and I'm not quite sure that interest rates are gonna go through the roof just because I don't see the feds. So let's see what happens, guys. That's my take on it. I think our strategies need to change. I think we need to be paying attention to the data. I think that you as an investor or a new investor or a seasoned investor should be looking at the data, paying attention. You should be paying attention to what to what Jerome Powell says. Absolutely, we should be because when he speaks, the markets respond. So we need to be paying attention to what's happening. We need to be paying close attention to job growth, population, interest rates. We need to be paying attention to those things and making our decisions based on the data, not on how we feel. All right, guys, I really appreciate it. If you guys like this content, give us a thumbs up and share this if you think someone can uh, use this content. Really appreciate you guys. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. So guys, if you like this video you just watched, click on this video up here. It might be something you might like. And guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Peace out.